Good morning, guys. Uh, it's Coach Goodrich here with another uh, sixth grade heritage studies ancient civ cultural geography video. This is actually going to be the last one uh, of, of the year um, in terms of the time, and this is Unit Eight. Uh, we're going to squeeze everything onto this today. This is God's kingdom and the part that we all have to play in it today. So, essential questions, you can go and pause the video right here and uh, write these down. How did the gospel spread throughout the world after the death of Christ? Number two, what part do I still have to play in the spreading of the good news of Jesus? When you're ready, you can play the video again. How did Christianity spread after Jesus, and we kind of talked a little bit about this, um, especially in the uh, the Roman unit uh, with the disciples or the apostles. Um, so the gospel spread throughout the Middle East, Middle Eastern and Roman world by Jesus' disciples and missionaries in the time period following Jesus' death. And from that time, you know, he grew from being Jesus and his disciples uh, to including Lots of other people um, still heavily persecuted, obviously, at that time. Um, Paul, Peter, James, John, etc. brought the good news to several different parts of the known world. Um, if you go and you start doing more research on the different apostles in particular, you get to see that you know, some of them went to, went to different parts of Asia, like India. Some of them uh, went to Africa. Some of them stayed in the Middle East. Some of them went to Greece. Some of them went to uh, Italy in the surrounding areas like that. This legacy of mission work, both at home and abroad, is still our mission as Christians today. And that's a big talking point. You, know, you don't have to be a missionary only in places that are far away from here. You can be a missionary here in your home, in your community. And we take that from the Great Commission, you know, Matthew 28, 16 through 20. That's Paul writing some of the letters. So let's go to some of the specific places that uh, that this happened. So Egypt and Africa. Egypt may have been evangelized as early on as by the Apostle Mark. Uh, and Alexandria was an important early city for Christianity. It housed a huge library there with a lot of Christian man, uh, manuscripts and tomes before its untimely destruction. Athanasius was another important Egyptian Christian leader, even when he was persecuted for his beliefs. Uh, Central and Southern Africa remain predominantly Christian today, thanks heavily to missionary work like the, uh, the Moffat family, Robert and Mary. And now Christianity is growing faster in Africa every year than in Europe or North America. So a lot of hopeful signs coming from that region. Mesopotamia and Persia. God can use people or nations that refuse to recognize him as Lord. He's in that a lot throughout history. Um, for example, he used the Assyrians and the Chaldeans to subdue the Israelites when they disobeyed him. Um, and he used specific rulers such as Nebuchadnezzar, Esther, and Artaxerxes to showcase his power and plan. Um, today, the Middle East is a major contentious area, um, really, between the secular world, between Christianity, between Islam, between Judaism, and it all kind of converges in that area. Like in Jerusalem, you had some of the most famous mosques in the world right in front of the uh, Western Wailing Wall, and churches right around the corner, and they're all kind of in that area together. Greece, Rome, and Europe. Peter and Paul themselves evangelized the vast majority of the Roman Empire from Judea to Rome itself in the face of massive persecution. Uh, with the Edict of Milan passing in 313 AD, Constantine halted the persecution of believers and allowed Christianity for the first time to grow out in the open. Uh, in 1517, 1200 years later, Martin Luther started the Protestant Reformation with his 95 Theses, uh, defense of personal faith and salvation in Christ. And now the Christian community um, in terms of its theology, is divided between Roman Catholicism, Eastern Orthodoxy, and Protestantism. And this is St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. Uh, this obelisk is where 
Peter was supposedly crucified, and then Martin Luther nailing the 95 Theses to the door of his church in Wittenberg, Germany. In Asia, Christianity came to, to India through Thomas, uh, doubting Thomas from the New Testament, was supported later by early church leaders like Eusebius and Pantanaeus. Um, in more modern times, William Carey, a missionary from England, came over in the late 1700s, um, and as India slowly came under more British control, he had more missionaries um, that followed after him. Christian influences in China can be seen as far back as the 600s with a Persian and later a Chinese translation of the Bible brought to the Tang Dynasty specifically. By the 18th century, missionaries like Hudson Taylor and Robert Morrison brought the gospel until the Boxer Rebellion in 1899 forced out many Christians. Japan was closed for many years until the American Navy forced the Japanese to open its ports to pretty much everybody, which allowed Christianity to slowly start to spread into that region. In Latin America, Christianity spread in Central and South America with the Spanish conquistadors as they moved their way through the continent. More recently, more and more immigrants have moved to these regions, bringing with them more denominations of Christianity. And both the British Bible Society and the American Bible Society helped translate the Bible into Spanish and Portuguese, along with sending more and more missionaries into those regions. And those are still two of the predominant Christian organizations in the world today. So what does this mean for you? What does it mean for me? You know, Matthew 13, 31 through 32, the parable of the mustard seed. You know, it, Jesus says, with faith the size of a mustard seed, we can move mountains, we can do anything. And that's kind of how the kingdom of God started off. It's very, very, very small in a very isolated part of the world, but now it's grown to over 2 billion nominal followers throughout the world. What am I specifically called to do? And I'm, I think this is a simplistic version, but breaking it down is as easy as I can. Uh, personal salvation, saved by grace through faith, intentional discipleship, to read, pray, fellowship with other believers, and then mission work, both in your community and abroad. Like we talked about earlier, you don't have to go halfway around the world to do mission work. There's plenty to be done here to spread the gospel. All right, guys, I know this was a short little video, but here's your mini quiz. Get ready. Uh, this will be posted on Google Classroom as well, so you can transcribe your answers there uh, for your grade. And um, congratulations, guys. This was your last little section of notes for the year. Very proud of you, and I look forward to discussing this with you further in class very soon.